Hey everyone, I hope all of you had an amazing day so far and welcome to Kayan Al Bashar. I'm going to keep rolling the R in Bashar because I know it's not the proper pronunciation, but I really just like the way it sounds when I say Kayan Al Bashar. So with that out of the way, we are going to build three things today. The first of which is building this elevated walkway in between the two front red pen habitats. Then we will move on to building the facade of the right wing of the palace, or at least the facade that's oriented towards these two red panda habitats. And then we're going to build the second red panda habitat. But this is actually where you guys had a little bit of input into today's video, because I had enough footage to make, well, not to completely make two videos, but that would overlap into two videos. So I asked you guys in the poll if you like wanted to see two videos or wanted to see one video where I just show you the highlights, where I basically cut out stuff which might not be the most important or like the most intricate building stuff and such. But the overwhelming majority of you guys asked for me to show everything, even if it meant that we are going to not finish the rep and habitat today, sadly. We are going to build the centerpiece of the Red Panda Habitat today though. But yeah, we're not completely going to finish it today. We're going to start it up today and then finish it in the next video. So yeah, you are going to see everything though. So I think that's a good thing because there are some interesting things in today's video. But anyway, back to what we're building. So we are starting off with this elevated walkway which originally was meant to be a bridge when i was still thinking of building a one giant habitat one of you guys actually said that it was still possible to actually build one giant red panda habitat even though they are solitary animals so they don't really like to be in groups but he said that i could turn some settings off and i'm certainly very ha happy to hear that you can do that i am also happy that i didn't do that because i was well, I'm still actually afraid if I do that, then the red pandas would just cluster into one small area, which they really like. And then you would have like, let's say the front left habitat, or at least what now is the front left habitat, be completely filled with red pandas. And then all the other areas of this giant habitat would just be completely empty. And um, yeah, that's... I think that's also like a, a very annoying thing if you have like a giant habitat and everything is, or every animal is just clustered into one area. Then you basically have this giant habitat for nothing. So I'm still very happy that I actually built five separate habitats. Yes, I said five because, well, I'm planning to do two in the front, two on the sides of the palace and then one inside of the palace. I I think I've already talked about this in the last video, but I'm very interested in how I'm going to do the one inside of the palace. But, well, that's for me to know and for you guys to find out because I already have a little bit of a plan. But anyway, for back to this basically elevated walkway, as I said, it was meant to be a bridge. And then it became just an elevated walkway. And... I went a little bit insane with the amount of foliage because I really like it if plants aren't like very neat and planned out because that makes me really think of like an English style garden I think or like a French chateau which like they are pretty buildings but I don't like the gardens. I like my gardens to be a little bit wild and a little bit messy you know just because I really want that natural feel. I don't want a very well manicured garden. But anyway, so this walkway is actually not really referencing anything or like not any of the reference things that I uh, found. It's just like I want an elevated walkway and I just went crazy. So all the plants, like we have like the plants on the sides are basically growing out towards the pot. They are going over the pot. So if you actually like don't like clutter it up in the right way it looks like just an overgrown patch that wasn't well maintained but well also fun little thing i have these squirrel well let's just say those squirrels are everywhere or at least so far they are everywhere i mean it just fits like 
I think, yeah, two of you guys said in the previous video, like, what's wrong with you speaking? Like, is there something wrong? Are you all well? Yes, I'm all fine and doing well. It's just like a basic thing for my videos. It's just like, I start recording and I just... Most of the time, I speak a lot faster than I think. So, sometimes my brain is just like, here are words, try to make something of them. And then my mouth tries. So, I think just being or calling myself a squirrel just really fits. Because I imagine if a squirrel could talk, it would probably talk a little bit like me. Just like insane and no coherency towards it at all. So, uh, yeah, to those two people, I am completely fine and I was actually, like, I find those comments really funny to just hear that, like, people are worried because uh, I just can't talk. Words are hard. I think I'm directly quoting one of those comments. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying those things. But anyway, so back to what we're building. So we have moved on from the elevated walkway. The amount of foliage I actually increased or not. It then became like denser, but I just made it a little bit longer because if you looked, it didn't cover the entire elevated walkway. But now we are building the facade of the right wing of the palace. And here I can directly say this was heavily inspired by the Alhambra uh, if I'm correct, Moorish Palace in Granada in southern Spain or southern Spain. And this is probably my favorite building, like just in general. Like I really like ancient Grecian buildings, but still the Alhambra in Spain just... Yeah, I if I can do one thing, I would just visit that palace. Like it's all built in this very like imposing, like it's intimidating, but... Not in a bad way, like it's, as I said, imposing as it is a palace, but it's also, this might sound weird, but to me it looks like very gentle, very warm and inviting, like everything looks very delicate, I would say, like all the decorations and such, also like all the colors being used in the palace, they are all warm tones, so it just feels very inviting and just... Every picture of the Alhambra just makes me happy, just because of how it looks. So this side of the palace is heavily inspired by that. And I'm actually thinking of making the palace a little bit more inspired in general by the Alhambra. Just because yeah, I, that, it's just my favorite building in the world. Like even though Tinopolis is completely geared towards ancient Greece and I really like ancient Grecian buildings. And I don't have a lot of knowledge or just experience with building Islamic architecture. Like, the Alhambra is just my favorite building. Like, I really want to visit it one day. But anyway, so the main inspiration points I took from the Alhambra is the roofs and somewhat of the arches. They are a little bit more rounded than the other arches I've built so far. And... I was thinking of making them completely rounded, but then I just thought like, all right, then it's just going to be very, well, it wouldn't be a coherent picture with the rest of the palace so far. And I wasn't going to go back to the front facade of the palace and redo that. So it's a little bit pointed, but I still really like how it looks. I'm also like, this is what surprised me a little bit because I really thought that those pillars just looked way too small like they look way too how would i say it thin to support the structure so it was kind of new and interesting to see like those tiny little pillars i mean they look great and they make it look even more like delicate and such but yeah i had seen those pillars before but i was just like is this Photoshop or so? Because they just look so tiny compared to what they are supporting. But anyway, so just because I didn't want to have one giant um, wing or just one giant gallery, actually. Again, like my brain is a little bit slower than I speak. So sometimes it's just like 
words are hard. But anyway, I didn't want to have just one giant gallery of pillars, so I built one extension to it, so that there's a little bit more variety in the building. That's just not all pillars. So I'm really happy with actually that I did that because I did see that at the end of the gallery where there is just only pillars, it was becoming like a very monotone thing. Like it's very much copy paste and I don't like that. And so uh, I lost my train of thought a little bit there, but I'm the only thing that I don't really like is that I put like very heavy pillars on top of these very like delicate tin pillars. So I might go back and change that because it just looks a little bit out of place. Like it feels like the lower pillars, even though I already said they look just always too tiny to support the weight they're actually carrying. In this case, they actually look like they are going to break. So I might change that and basically make the pillars on top either thinner or make the pillars on the bottom a little bit thicker but anyway so for the rest of the gallery i do know that i didn't show you guys how i built the arches and the well main part of the gallery with the pillars and such but that was because my game crashed yes halfway to well not halfway but while i was recording building those pillars my game just crashed and this might not be a bad thing if it didn't take my entire pc down with it so basically it crashed and i was just like oh no this is like an hour of building have i just completely lost it yes i did so sadly i don't or i am not able to show you guys how I built the arches because it's just gone like the entire file was just like unopenable because well my PC just crashed in the middle of recording and it doesn't you know fix itself if I just start it up again it's just it's gone but anyway so I wanted to also have a little bit more variety also on top of the building like I didn't want it to just end with that rich or tile roof like I wanted to say rich style roof because they are named that in Plant Coaster and I'm actually not sure how they are named in Plant Zoo. And yeah, I wanted to bring a little bit of the front facade or the main facades or main gate back into this building because by now I was realizing, oh, it just looks way too different from the rest of the palace so far. It doesn't look like it's part of the palace it just looks like another palace in itself and that's basically why i brought this greenish thing back again it still doesn't look green because well the shadow makes it so that it looks sort of black really dark greenish and i'm still not completely happy with it i might again change it a little bit in between episodes just because it was a little bit hard because the main facade or like the front gate is a little bit more inspired by Arabian architecture and then this is from Sun and Spain so it's like on the complete different ends of the Mediterranean and you can see that a little bit or actually a lot so I might go back and change a few things to make it one cohesive building although I might also wait and see when it when the building actually connects because this wing is actually still like somewhat disconnected from the rest of the facade because i didn't build the connecting arch or the connecting gate between those two so i might wait until the entire building is connected to each other or i'm going to change it in between episodes and then you guys will see but anyway so building some doors and such because otherwise this gallery would have no function whatsoever and i'm not going for realism in this vid well this video in this entire zoo and i think that was already pretty obvious by it floating in the air and well i just wanted to have a little bit of a function to this area otherwise it was just like all right this is just a blank wall and with function i don't mean that there would be shops maybe in like the extension i make like some exhibits 
but that will probably be all. So there's not going to be a lot of functionality to this swing, but I mean, it looks pretty and I think that's what I do it mostly for. Like I don't build buildings to be actually functional in game. I build buildings because I think they look pretty in their location. Also, this is one of the first times I put lighting in the palace. But here is another thing I completely copied from the Alhambra because in the Alhambra you have these like fountains which, well, I of course really like. I like the entire Alhambra in general. And I want to try and make a fountain. And of course, like on such a small place, you can't add water that's in game, like you can't add that. So you have to be a little bit creative with the effects or the water effects that you have. And it made sense that the water would be like flowing from one side to the other, like it would be flowing off the island. And that's going to be a major part of building all these islands. The amount of waterfalls I can add with these floating islands. But it's also tricky because like, how am I going to do that? Because there are going to be giant waterfalls then. But yeah, in the end, I really just enjoyed messing around with the water effects and then adding a lot of foliage again because I just want to go insane in Kayan Al-Bashar with all the foliage just because we have so much that I can just go completely nuts with it. And basically, like the idea for having like cohesive foliage, I already explained this in Ozaru, but it's just like I basically built up like a catalog of plants that would be naturally growing in the location that it's at. So like the cypress trees would basically grow here naturally. These Sudanese, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the rest, but those trees and then you have like all the palm trees and then using those in different ways throughout the zoo. It's going to make it look like they are actually plants that just grow there naturally and aren't like forcefully grown there or like planted. Although with the palace I could actually make some more wilder plants because well it's a palace so you would have like plants that wouldn't be there naturally and are planted because well actually I, I already said I don't like it when things are like very structured and such when it comes to nature. I really just like it when plants just go insane. I mean, the red pandas also went insane. They actually really like their habitats, which is surprising because in Ozaru, none of the animals liked their habitats because they were all screaming that the coverage was way too much. And I do know that the red pandas, they, like, they live more in foresty areas, but well, they are very accepting animals if the, well, the sliders weren't changed in between the beta and the full release. If those sliders were changed, then I understand, but otherwise they would just be very understanding and relaxed animals because they just accept everything. And somehow one of them was transported off the island. I don't know how how or why but i just found him in well basically on sort of ground level now because the island again is floating but i should probably talk about what we're building right now but i don't want to because it's not that interesting well it is a little bit because here it actually does have the completely rounded archers which i saw in the alhambra and i just thought like all right i need to add these at least one place in this wing of the palace so yeah just building this entire wing the entire idea was to have like multiple levels and multiple structures in the wing just because i didn't want a french chateau style like with a french chateau everything is very symmetric very like planned out and i didn't want that with this palace like i don't want it with anything actually I want something to look like it was grown over time naturally. That sounds like I'm talking about the plants, but it can also apply to buildings where it's just like there's things being added to it and then things removed and then I go nuts with the foliage and then it somehow ends up looking good. So yeah, it's um, like I'm already slightly getting flashbacks of what we're going to build next because 
But what we're going to build next is that red banner habitat and the centerpiece for it. And um, let's just say I tried something new and I was completely traumatized by it. And we're slowly getting there. Like I'm seeing the footage now and I'm like just like for far or uh, words are hard. Can I just use that every time? I don't know what to say. But yeah, we are starting now with the red panda habitat. And I wanted, first I thought actually to make it like a duplicate or like a mirrored version of the other red panda habitat. But then I already said I don't like it to be completely symmetrical. Like the facade or the front gate is symmetrical slightly because the upper parts aren't. But here I just thought like, all right, I can go insane. Why don't I try something insane? So you see me trying to build a somewhat smooth river because, well, it's not a smooth river, but just a small little uh, waterway. And I smoothed it out a little bit just because I was afraid that if the red pandas fell into it, that they would be stuck. I have built habitats where animals got stuck in the water. And uh, I don't know if red pandas could swim or can swim, but I didn't want to try my luck. But anyway, so quick tip for basically building habitats with this um, basically invisible fence. I always go a little bit outside of the actual fences that I built. Just so that if the red banners go very close to the fence, they don't trigger the alarm of that they are escaping. Just like a little bit of a precaution because I don't like the notification of animals escaping like I don't like the sound but anyway so I wanted to go completely nuts with this habitat because the other habitat is actually compared to this one very tame and I basically just built a lot of rocks a lot of them because um, well you will see why in a few minutes but I just start like all right I I'm having a slight waterway here and the source of the water is going to be, well, it's going to be up in the air. I can already say that. I don't know why I should keep it a secret. But yes, their um, shelter is floating and they actually are able to reach it because I didn't forget to actually make sure that it was traversable for them. They could get there. I haven't really seen them like really get up there or at least go up there in like the uppermost parts of their shelter but well you will see in just a few minutes what I mean but anyway so that's basically the reason why I wanted to have a lot of rocks in this area because then it would level out with the rocks floating in the air like if you have no rocks on the ground and then just a giant rock floating in the air it looks kind of weird so I just thought like, all right, there's going to be a waterfall here because of course, I mean, well, I wanted to say it's a YouTube video, so we need to add a waterfall, but it just felt right to build a waterfall here. And then also have just like a very, well, a little, words are hard again, <laughs> but to have just a giant difference between this habitat and the next one. And here you can finally see me trying to build that floating island, which is going to be their shelter. And basically I had one giant island and then a couple of smaller rocks on the side. Because again, it would look weird if you had just one rock. Like you need more rocks to even it out. Although you need one giant rock and probably a lot sm of smaller rocks. So, yeah, throughout this entire video, it's just like, words are hard. And I'm using the excuse that I'm a little bit tired from building all day yesterday, so... Yeah, can I use that as an excuse for not being coherent at all? Yeah, I'm going to use that as an excuse. But anyway, so the idea for their shelter was actually like a gazebo, like an Arabian Islamic style gazebo. Because, well, it's a garden, so a gazebo would make a little bit more sense than building a giant, let's say, a mosque. Or a mosque-like building. And it was a little bit tricky, because I just couldn't make sense of the roof. Like, I tried something new with the roof that I haven't built any time before this. 
and um, yeah, it. Um, let's just say the remaining part of the video is uh, mostly that roof. But first off, try to make it so that it would fit on basically the entire pillars, because um, yeah, sometimes it, the game works with you, and then you can like build very quickly. But sometimes you're also just stuck and you want to build something. But it's just like, I can't really make it work. It doesn't really work. And then in the end, I wanted to make this a completely round gazebo. But you can see the pointed edges. And I actually really like it a lot more with the pointed edges than if it was completely round, to be honest. I mean, it's also a little bit easier to build with basically the pointed edges and just the straight parts so uh, yeah I, it sounds a little bit of like a cop out of like oh i really like it with these pointed edges because it's a bit easier to build with but i also really just like it with the pointed edges makes it look like a star a little bit from above but then trying to find the right piece to use as an arch for the gazebo because um yeah, you can quickly see me trying to struggle or trying to build like a glass dome, but that just didn't fit in here. Like a glass dome could maybe fit in with like the, well, the main building of the palace, but not in this, I wanted to say tiny gazebo, but it's actually pretty large. Or at least it ends up be being pretty large. And I might plan on making, well, only this gazebo actually on the workshop. Like I don't think... You guys will have much use of this entire habitat on the workshop because, well, then you would have all the walls on the sides and the walls on the other side. Like, on the side that you see right now, they are decorated, but on the other side they aren't because the, that side isn't seen. So, I'm thinking of placing the gazebo on the workshop, but not the rest of the habitat. Because, well, you would need a very specific place to place this habitat. Which is most likely just this place. So yeah, just because it wouldn't be useful, I am probably only going to place this gazebo on the habitat. Or on the habitat, whoa. On the workshop. Words are hard. That's just going to be my catchphrase. Today is a weird day. Like I also started really late with recording this commentary. Yeah, and um, don't mind me. I'm just tired and a little bit uh, well insane from building all day last day but anyway so you can already see what i plan to do with the top of the gazebo and of course i wanted to have an onion like dome or an onion form word today but yeah i wanted to have that dome and I wanted to actually have it so that the red pandas would be able to take shelter in the dome itself. That the dome itself actually also had a function. And you might wonder, how do they get into that dome? And I've seen them walk up straight pillars or straight beams so they are able to go up there. I actually also checked with like the filter of it being traversable. They can get up there. And it was really exciting and haven't really seen them get up there as of yet because well i've been mostly building so that most of the time the game is on past but they are able to get up there and um well i'm just waiting to see when it will happen but also because there's an inside to this dome i needed to make a proper inside of the dome so that's why i'm using those white um well i've mainly been using them as like pillar tops and such but here i'm just using them as the inside of the dome so that the inside of the dome also has a nice little finish to it instead of it just being those well there are green beams or beams but um like the longer this video goes on the more incoherent i become so this video makes no sense but i'm just having fun with the commentary by now but anyway so i thought of a little bit realism and I don't usually do that but today or last day I did and I just thought like all right this is a desert climate I'm going to make a shelter inside this dome this dome has quite a dark color so this dome is going to be 
basically an oven. So I thought like, all right, I want to add windows to the dome. Yeah, that's basically what kept this video from being 30 minutes long into 35. I think even a little bit longer than that. Because I was just so dead set on making windows in this dome that I basically just forgot to, well, do anything beyond that. Like I was just like, I'm going to make this work no matter how long it takes. And it's a very, well, it uses the same techniques of building a dome. But now I'm actually building, in a way, building three domes. Because I built the dome that is going to be the windows. Then I built the dome that is going to be the inside of the dome. And then I built the outside dome, which is actually the part that you are going to see. Like the red pandas are going to see the inside and also the outside, but mostly the inside. And then it was more of a trick of like, all right, how do I make it so that you can't see the inside of the dome as much from the outside? And how can I make it work? Because of course it's three layers and you need to make it so that they connect in a way that it's not insanely, well, just insanely bad. So that was a fun little thing. Also, yes, I'm going to change the island a little bit because now the dome is just way too large for the island. It's actually sticking out of the island. And it's, um, well, I had just a lot of fun with this dome. And it's also a little bit more garlic shaped than onion shaped. I don't think that's a term for these kinds of domes, but I mean, if you look at it and squint in the right way, it's just a lot more garlic shaped than onion shaped. So there's that. Yes, this video goes absolutely nowhere with the commentary, but uh, I really like that. Like, I like my commentary to just be non-functional at all. Like, it's kind of like, um, like I want to say this, but kind of being like with a drunk friend. <laughs> I am not drunk in any way, though, so don't go there, but... Uh, yeah, I just hit record and see what happens. Anyway, so making it fit a little bit better because there would just be this raw edge to the window. So every window is in a way personally made. Like it's not just copied and then rotated. So there's a little bit of that. Most of the time I just rotate it and then I'm just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> and then came the more, well, slightly interesting part of actually making the spire of the dome because as you can see right now it just has a stumpy spire and uh, it's never good to have a stumpy spire so uh, it was a lot of just thinking of like all right how do i make this work how do i make it so that it's kind of similar to the other dome that we've built which actually has like a very nice looking spire i would say so it was just a long time of searching for the right piece to use because it just wouldn't come to me. Like, it, like I was trying so many pieces and then I was like, oh, this piece might work. And then no, and I removed it after five minutes. And then I actually, in the end, I did find a piece that worked. And uh, it just took a very long time to actually find that piece. Because, um, yeah, I think I actually ended up by extending the spire, or at least like the green dome into the spire a little bit more than I started off with. I did also copy the top of the spire from the last uh, dome or the first dome that we've built. And uh, I'm happy that I did because by this time, like, my inspiration had run dry. <laughs> so... I needed to take a break, but I was just like so focused and so stubborn that I was like, I need to finish this now. Otherwise, I'm going to hate myself afterwards. Because then there's a high chance that I wouldn't finish it. But yeah, the in the end, it all worked out fine. I mean, I might be slightly less sane because of it, but in the end, the building is great. The Red Pandas are loving it. And... They haven't really gone into it as of yet because they mostly enjoy being on the floor. 
Like in the other habitat, they are always on like the climbing things. Here they are mostly on the floor. So do the, these pandas have like a personality or something? I don't know. Like maybe on the other habitat, the climbing stuff is maybe a little bit more inviting, but I don't know. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was completely incoherent, but I still hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you liked the video. If you really enjoyed the video, don't forget that you can subscribe. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.